I boarded, I assumed we were at door two and began turning left. I was wrong. I was actually doubly wrong. It's been so long since I've been on a 767 that I totally forgot that there is no second boarding door. The seat finishes were smart looking and in great condition. As is common for this seat type, half seats are directly next to the window and half next to the aisle. Both of them provide very little privacy though, since the seat shell is so low. Sitting upright, looking straight ahead, this is my precise eye level. I can't remember ever needing to look down so far to see an IFE monitor. Each seat had a universal outlet and a USB. Let's take a look at the amenities on board. The pillow was the absolute definition of floppy. This thing couldn't support a kitten, and it was very clearly used from the flight over from Vienna. Same thing goes for the blanket. When boarding, I noticed that half of the blankets were wrapped and sealed, half were not. Mine was not. It was otherwise a cozy blanket though. Headphones were pretty cheap feeling and equally cheap sounding. Then there's this really, really odd generic amenity kit. It feels like it was just a temporary solution for something. Just super cheap feeling. And then the parade of triangles began. First up with a hot towel service. Took a minute to figure out how to engage this table and then the tablecloths were laid. I will say, I, I don't enjoy this entire meal service being done in complete darkness. If it was a very late night flight, I could un- But we took off before 7 p.m. And I'm not just saying this for videography reasons. I just don't want to eat in the dark with a spotlight on me. I did enjoy how many card services they used during the service though. Here's the full menu for tonight's flight. The red price tags next to the wines are my additions to give you an idea of the current retail value for each bottle in USD. I started off with the Schlumberger Sparkling Rosé, which was served in a small bottle. I actually really enjoyed it, but it was served too warm, hoping that my second one would be chilled a bit more, but they were already sold out. The utensils came with this itziest little clothespin, I presume to put your napkin on your shirt, and some really good bread were passed around. Both the starter and the main course was served from a cart. For the starter, I had the roast beef served with ratatouille and horseradish dip. I do wish that the horseradish had around 10 times more punch, but otherwise this was a fantastic starter. 
and easily the highlight of the food on board. For the main, I went with a stuffed chicken breast with grilled white asparagus and edamame. The ingredients felt pretty disjointed, but each on their own were tasty. Here's one really disappointing part for me, the coffee menu. Austrian is known for their separate coffee menus that they offer after dinner. Every trip report ever published about Austrian raves about it and speaks as if adding milk and whipped cream to a pretty glass is a rare skill set. Still, I was excited, but there were just three little problems though. Number one, the menu is much smaller than it used to be. The only halfway interesting thing on the menu was only offered in flights originating in Vienna, and they don't have decaf. Of the four options, one was just black coffee, two were just coffee with milk, and the special one was coffee with milk, whipped cream, and powdered sugar. Anyway, I went for dessert and was more than happy with my apple strudel. The entertainment system was pretty good. The screen was responsive, bright and clear, and there was a nice selection of movies and TV shows. As for the bathrooms, it was bare bones, and they certainly started to show their age. I waited for the sun to rise to show you the flatbed. Only then did I figure out how to lower the armrest, which is done by cleverly pulling up the outer part of the armrest while simultaneously pushing down the inner part. A button would have been nice, just saying. If you are a very still back sleeper, this will be fine for you. Never did realize how, how svelte a 767 wind. As we were approaching the airport, I wasn't paying attention to altitude. I just assumed that we were holding pretty high up due to the clouds. I was genuinely shook when we were on the ground seven seconds after the ground came into view, landing in near whiteout conditions. So that's all she wrote. For years, Austrian has been known to be this charming airline with great food. I suppose that's correct. But when you add in completely incompetent ground operations and what has to be one of the least private business class seats out there, it just leaves you wondering, what's all the fuss about and is this really worth it? That said, I do hope that you enjoyed this